Hi, my name is Ken Cuglin and I'm a senior analyst here at Digital Forensics Corporation. Uh, I want to talk about a cybercrime called sextortion. Most people watching this video may have been affected by this crime in one way or another, uh, whether it's someone you know or yourself being blackmailed. Sextortion has taken the US and other countries by storm in recent years. Uh, it's a crime where the victim gets lured into releasing their private pictures and videos to someone else in what they believe to be a romantic relationship. At some point during the communication with the perpetrator, the victim gets a blackmail message saying that if they don't pay up, the pictures and videos will be released to their friends and family or shared all over the internet. Now, my job here at DFC is keeping clients' personal and private pictures and videos out of the public domain. I help clients who have fallen victim to online blackmail. I help prevent the release of private information as well as bring the perpetrators to justice. And I take great pride in my work because I know that DFC is one of the few effective companies that can actually provide results to clients who value their reputation and want to make sure that their data is not released. Now, there are a couple of important things that I want to concentrate on in this video to provide the best type of advice for individuals who have been a victim of this crime. And I'm sure you have many questions. For instance, should I pay the perpetrator? Uh, if I do pay them, how can I be sure that my private videos and pictures won't be released? If I don't pay them, will they release all of my private pictures and videos and embarrass me in front of my friends, my family, and my colleagues? Uh, should I trust the perpetrators when they tell me what once I pay them, they'll leave me alone? If I ignore the blackmailers, will they simply just go away? And are there companies out there that can actually help me put a stop to this? These and many other questions are on the minds of every person who's fallen victim to this new wave of cybercrime. In this video, I will put to rest some myths and explain some hard to swallow facts about the situations that victims may find themselves in. First things first, let's understand that the individuals you're dealing with are criminals and by nature, they are not to be trusted. Consider this. Anything you send them can and will be used against you in the worst possible way to extract the maximum amount of money from you or to cause the maximum amount of damage. Now, let's start with a simple question. Should I pay them? Absolutely not. Uh, doing so will condition the perpetrators to look at you as sort of a cash cow. Uh, showing them that you're scared enough to pay them will only make the attacks more vicious and painful uh, until you pay again and again and again. Ultimately, they'll extract the maximum amount of money from you and then release the private pictures and videos anyways. More than 300,000 Americans fall victim to this crime on an annual basis. And I want you to know that if you've fallen victim to this horrendous type of blackmail, you're not alone. This is a simple case of being misled and trusting the wrong person. At one time or another, something like this has happened to us all. So don't worry, take comfort in knowing that there is hope. Now, unfortunately, ignoring this perpetrator won't do much in the way of getting you out of this mess. Uh, ignoring them will simply upset them and prompt them to release your private information onto the public domain. Taking swift action is what's required. The first step is confirming that if they actually have what they claim to have. Ask for screenshots, ask for proof of the video, ask for pictures. Confirm that your face is visible in those pictures and videos. Receiving such proof will confirm how real the threat is. Delay the payment process as long as you can. You have to get a game plan. Let the perpetrators know that you're gathering funds and that they should wait. Let them know that if they don't want to give you time, then they're probably not going to get paid. But keep in mind that this is only a trick to buy you a little bit of time. Now, at this point, the victim should make a decision whether they want to attack this problem by themselves or hire professionals. Now, this is a pivoting point in this entire ordeal. It's important to understand that while hiring a professional is the best possible way of dealing with this type of situation, uh, it can be handled without a professional. Now, helping us you know, weigh out the pros and cons of hiring a professional uh, versus dealing with this matter by yourself uh, is one of the client relations specialist's biggest responsibilities. And our client relations specialist here is Mark Daniel. Hi, my name is Mark and I'm a senior account executive with Digital Forensics Corporation. I'd like to help our viewers make a decision on which route to take when dealing with this very serious and very unfortunate situation. One of my many objectives as I advise my clients on what they should do is to help them understand the proper risk analysis. Having the proper grasp on the type of risk is one of the most important things when considering whether to engage a professional or to try and tackle the issue yourself. So now I want to talk about the key points to consider while calculating risk. The cost of hiring a professional to handle the crisis can start from about $400 for a basic service and may go up from there depending on the type of dedication and service level required by our clients. Some of the most important key elements to focus on when considering getting a pro involved is our 90% success rate in keeping your files from being shared on the internet. 
such as Facebook, social media. We also focus on preventing one-page websites from being posted by the perpetrators. In a nutshell, it's a simple website that is created by the perpetrators that releases all of the information which they have stolen from the victim, including uh, name, private pictures, videos, emails, phone numbers, addresses, etc. The site then becomes visible by Google or Yahoo and crawlers and indexes the page to become visible in the organic search of these search engines. We will show you more about these websites in the future video. Another important point to consider is that when you're hiring a company like Digital Forensics Corporation, that also means hiring all the resources that our company has gained access to throughout the years. Gaining access to Interpol contacts, as well as hundreds of police precincts in the States, as well as overseas, that are able to act on the information provided by DFC, as well as a group of analysts that I am proud to call my colleagues. These people have an unprecedented catch rate. Take a look at all these perpetrators, which our fine analysts have caught and identified to be involved in these horrendous crimes. Every one of these criminals has been dealt with swiftly by DFC. Rest assured, they will never make the mistake of blackmailing another unsuspecting victim. Dealing with the situation yourself is possible. However, I should warn you it may be dangerous. For individuals who have little to lose, it may be a good solution. Individuals who don't risk a great deal of damage to their reputation uh, by having the private videos released on social media may opt for this scenario. If you choose to deal with the situation by yourself, here's a few pointers. Never pay the perpetrators. Doing so will put a target on your back for additional payments and additional extortion and blackmail. Always try to stall for more time. From our experience, this tactic has a possibility of working. Stalling for more time or telling the perpetrators that you don't have the money and you're trying to gather funds to pay them. Be careful though. Using this tactic, as sometimes it's known to backfire, and your private information will be released because the perpetrators become upset and they're receiving numerous excuses for stalling for extra time. If you are using a stalling tactic, please create an elaborate story as to why you need more time such as allowing funds run between accounts, waiting for a payment from other individuals, etc. There have been times where the perpetrators simply got tired of communicating back and forth and start contracting victims who are actually paying them. Another tactic that can be used if you decide to deal with a situation yourself is that I don't care tactic. This is a tactic when the victim simply tells the perpetrators they don't care if they release any information about them, as long as this information cannot hurt them. Again, please be mindful that there has been instances when this backfired and information was released. If this tactic is successful, the perpetrator simply moves on to other victims who seem to have lots of fear over the potential release of their data. One thing for sure, ignoring the perpetrators is never a good idea. That seems to always lead to information being released. You also can't block them or delete your social media accounts because that will simply make them aware that you're not going to pay them. If you are opting in for DFC service, we have a totally different success rate as well as process. DFC takes a very professional approach and we start checking the criminals from the very beginning, including all of their IP addresses, their locations, as well as the device signature are captured. Communication is taken out of the hands of our client and into professional analytics hands. These people have years of experience in dealing with the extortion and blackmail. DFC has a 90% success rate and it's guaranteed meaning there is a much greater chance of keeping your data safe and secure if you are opting in for our professional blackmail services. With years of experience, Digital Forensics Corporation has built a huge database of municipalities and police stations abroad, as well as here in the United States. A lot of our contacts are in hotbeds of where these cyber crimes originate, such as uh, Ghana, Africa, the Ivory Coast, the Philippines, Russia. This is where DFC's contacts and international law enforcement agencies and government agencies come in handy. Each part of the investigative process has been meticulously documented and improved over the years from tracking criminals to getting law enforcement involved to getting confirmation that the criminals have decided to provide proof of private data deletion. Our process is second to none. Not to mention our continuous monitoring and support against ongoing blackmail when you become a DFC client. We guarantee that in the event the perpetrators return and start to blackmail you, our clients will never again have to talk to them and we will step in immediately. This often happens as clients' data and private information gets resent to other blackmail groups, which in turn will reach out to our client for new blackmail. Many times these are elaborate organizations with a hierarchy, as well as an entire process and a professional business type approach to blackmail and extortion.